Hey guys, Red Silvers here, and we're playing The Little Mermaid for the NES. We just finished the first level, so now we're going to head to Stage 2, Sunken Ship. Now why Ursula would want to head into a sunken ship, I don't know. But if we dig in this sand, we can get a seashell. Once again, use seashells for offense. And this one we actually are going to want to use in this chest. And that's going to give us our second red power-up. Now, with that, we lose the range power-ups that we had before, unfortunately. Once you get a new power, you lose the range. Kind of an odd decision, but... One other thing that this game does with power is that you can use it... It affects how str if you can push certain things. With enough power, you can push that barrel and open that chest that way. <laughs> and I s say that's kind of an odd design decision because... Sometimes there's power-ups you can't get because you don't have power-up. And you'd think that would be when you would want to be able to push something. Now that we have this power-up, though, we can get the big octopuses. And there we'll take a dingle hopper. That's what they call the forks in the movie. And since we can push that barrel, we'll go ahead and get a new range power up. And once you get the higher powers, it's nice because then other enemies that you couldn't get before, you can get. And we want to actually jump up here to get this seashell. Which we will then push up there to get our third power. And it's kind of amusing to me, but the bubbles actually change color. Now this is a little trickier because you can't put these guys into bubbles. Let's see if I can time this right. Oh! Don't die now. Anyway, there is a uh, power-up you can get there. And I think we our power maxed out. Yes, we can push this rock. Now, you do lose your power-ups when you die. And I just totally lost that rock, didn't I? Well, there would be another power-up in this chest, but that's okay. We don't need it. Now, here we have an odd example of a seashell that you don't need to use on a chest. So, we're going to go ahead and just use it and see if we can get a power-up here. And there's a health power-up for us. So, not a power-up, but just a health drop. But, that is it for the stage here. We're going into the boss fight. And the boss is Flotsam and Jetsam, the two eels from the movie. I think this is one of the more difficult fights, because first of all, you have two targets. Uh, these crabs, when they are not walking, you actually will just freeze them in place. So if you want to pick them up, you have to get them while they're standing. You see how they kind of crouch down? And you can't get them while they're in midair. At least you can't when you don't have high power. I'm not sure about with the power maxed out. And the two eels do not like coming out where you're at. If they come out and you're right there ready to hit them, they will usually run from you. So you do kind of have to play with them a little bit. See, if you saw there, he kind of ran away from me. Okay, one's down. And one's running away from me. Oh! That was not good. But really, like I said, the trickiest part of this fight is that the crabs move the way they do. 
Uh, you might have seen I can throw my bubbles diagonally as well as up. I cannot throw them downward though, so when they are above me, I can hit them. When they are below me, I cannot. And really, using your diagonal and your upward throws are really the easiest way to deal with this boss. But, even so, we did alright. I'll go ahead and get our points for our power-ups. And find out what's going on next. Who freezes the sea? Honestly, who does that? As a kid, I remember always finding Sebastian's lip here to be amusing. But that's it for stage two, guys, so we'll pick it up next time in the ice level.